So this is Math 99. We are going to take a peek at section 3.4, uh, Compositions of Functions. So we have these functions, and the thing that we're looking at is how do we put them together? How do we um, compose them? Like, it, So for example, this f plus g of x, this notation right here, this means um, f of x plus g of x. So basically, we have these two functions. We have f of x and we have g of x. There's my little picture of a function. And we're going to plug x into f, get some answer, plug x into g, get some answer, and then add them together, f of x plus g of x. So in this case, um, I, I'm not evaluating it for a certain value, like I just have x. So f of x is, my input's x, input minus 3. So this would be x minus 3 plus uh, x squared minus 9. And then I can just throw those together, x squared plus x, uh, negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12. So notice that is those two functions added together. And as you would guess, g minus f of x, that means g of x minus f of x. So notice what we're doing is we're letting g stand for this process, input squared minus 9, and f standing for this process, input minus 3, and then we're subtracting those processes from each other. Um, like we're used to letting variables stand for number. Now we're letting a letter, a function, stand for a process. So we're abstracting the process and giving it a symbol. Uh, g of x is input squared minus 9 minus f of x. Notice we're subtracting all of f of x. So it's subtracting that whole thing. So that, just, that negative sign is going to get distributed into there x squared minus 9 minus x plus 3. There's a mistake that I often see. Uh, x squared minus x, negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. And it actually may be a mistake you've seen me do on occasion. It's not uncommon. Um, f times g of x, just like you're probably thinking, that would be f of x multiplied by g of x. So f of x is x minus 3 g of x is x squared minus 9. And we know how to multiply these together. Uh, distribute everything to everything. x times x squared is x cubed. Uh, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. And negative 3 times negative 9 is positive 27. And there it is. There's those two things multiplied together. Now, notice this is f times g of x, right? That's like a... that dots often not written in there, but it's like a, a little closed uh, multiplication. Um, just hold on to that because these ones below are not multiplication. We'll talk about what those are. Uh, G divided by f of x. Again, you probably would guess that would be G of x divided by f of x. So let's see, G of x is x squared minus 9. F of x is x minus 3. All right, so that's good. That's set up. Uh, let's see if we can't simplify this. x squared minus 9, difference of squares. That's x plus 3 times x minus 9 over x minus 3. Notice that divides out. So this is the same as x plus 3. And I'm just going to write just for form x can't be 3 because that would have been divided by 0 in my original one. So there we go. This, this part's sufficient. This part is uh, extra in a very good way. So now we have a different... Uh, notation f of g of x. This is like a, an open circle. This does not mean f times g of x. This means f of g of x. So in other words, what we're doing is we're, we're plugging x into g, which we know gives us x squared minus 9, but then we're plugging that into f. So notice that f is, f is like input minus 3. Right? If we said f of 7, this would be 7 minus 3. If we said f of a, this would be a minus 3. What we're saying, though, is f of x squared minus 9. So that x squared minus 9 gets plugged into that x spot. So notice this is the same as saying f of x squared minus 9. So we're saying this is the input into f. And now we can combine some terms, uh, x squared minus 9 minus 3, x squared minus 12. 
f of g of x. We're plugging g of x into f. It's kind of neat. We can plug one function into another. So g of f of x would be we're plugging f of x into g. Notice this is like not the same as this, right? Because g is input squared minus 9 and f is x minus 3. So what we're doing is we're plugging uh, x minus 3 into g. And g is input squared minus 9. So notice these are not the same thing, right? We're squaring that. If I squared x minus 3, that would be uh, x squared minus 6x plus 3. And just a small note, remember when you square something, you're multiplying it by itself. So you would have to multiply that out and you would get this. And then uh, in this case, I have plus 9 minus 9. That cancels out. So this would be x squared minus 6x. Notice this g of f and f of g are not the same thing. This is this. Uh, this process, uh, it matters what order I do them in. All right, that's the basic idea behind these. So here's this question. H of X is this, J of X is that. Does H of J of X equal J of H of X? I just showed up here, it doesn't seem to happen. Let's check it in this, in this case. H of J of X, take J, plug it into H. So notice H is two, times input plus one. And my input happens to be j. And j of h of x is take h and plug it into j. Notice j is three minus input. My input happens to be h, which is two x plus one. Once again, this function is taking the place of that input spot. That x is replaced with two x plus one. And just looking at these, it doesn't look to me like they would be the same. Distribute that 2 into there, that's 6 minus 2x plus 1, a negative 2x plus 7. Distribute that negative into there, 3 minus 2x minus 1, that would be uh, negative 2x plus 2, not equal to each other. Uh, in math, we'd say this function does not commute. Uh, if we change the order in which we do things, we don't always get the same answer. All right, so here's a, uh, a table, a lookup table. And the way that this table works is I have x values, I have f of x values, and I have g of x values. So for example, if I said f of 3, this is saying, what's the f value when x is 3? So when x is 3, f of 3 is 3. What would g of 3 be? Well, when the x value is 3, the g value is 2. Again, it's just, it's just a lookup table. So let's think about this, f of g of x. Now before when we were adding these together, we were doing f and g separately and then adding the answers together. But notice in this notation, what we're doing is we take this function g and we plug three into it and we get some answer. That answer gets plugged into f and then we get another answer. Notice these aren't these are these are making these run uh, consecutively instead of like in parallel. So let's see, g of three. Well, g of three, where you look that up is two. Now f of two is eight. Notice what this is saying. Plug three into g. Oh, oh it spits out some answer. Plug that answer into f. It spits out some answer. So let's do this one. f of three is three. G of three. Two. If you want to pause and give these a go, that's not a bad idea. Uh, G of one is three. So the output for G of one is three. And now if we plug three into F, F of three is three. Do one more. Uh, G of F of four. Uh, F of four is one. G of one is three. So on this one, I have these two functions, but they're just as a graph. So here's G of X, here's F of X. Notice on, on G, if I said, what's G of five? The input is five, right? The X value is five. So what's the associated Y value? The output is three, right? X's are inputs, Y's are outputs. So this is like also a lookup table, but just as a, as a graph. So if I think about this composite function, f 
of g of 1. So this is g. g of 1, here's the input of 1, its output is 3. So g of 1 is 3. Now I'm going to plug that into f. f of 3, this is f, so here's 3, Oop, is 6. Do another one. Uh, at g of f of 5. So I need to evaluate f of 5 first. You know, if you think about order of operations, you go and inside the parentheses, you do that part first, work your way out. That's what we're doing. f of 5, it looks like f of 5 is 2. g of 2 looks like is 0. All right, here's another example. Uh, now the functions are just written out as functions instead of like on a table or a graph. So note if uh, f of t is t squared minus t. So if I said f of that would be 3 squared minus 3, checking the value, which is 6. So let's do that. f of h of 1. So h of 1 is h is 3 times input plus 1. So 3 times input, I'm uh, sorry, plus 2. Plus 2. So h of 1 equals 5. So this evaluates the 5. So now I want to evaluate f of 5. That's 5 squared minus 5. H of f of negative 2. So let's see, i got to do this f of negative 2 first. So I plug in negative 2 into here. Be careful here. You're squaring negative 2 and then subtracting negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. If you're going to do this on your calculator, enter it this way. If you enter it this way, you won't get the right answer. That will spit out negative 4. Notice that says 2 squared and then negated. If you want to square negative 2, you put the negative 2 in parentheses so that the negative is getting squared as well. So negative 2 squared uh, is 4, minus negative 2, plus 2 is 6. So we know f of negative 2 is 6. This is equal to 6. So h of 6, uh, plug 6 into h, 3 times input, plus 2, 18 plus 2 is 20. Uh, so notice we have these same functions set up, f of h of x and h of f of x. So let's see. h of x is 3x plus 2, and I'm going to plug that into f. This is interesting. Like f is input squared minus input. So this h is going to go into two input spots. Notice that it's input squared. The input happens to be uh, this, and the input happens to be this. One note on this notation, notice this one is in terms of t, f of t is t squared minus t. This one's in terms of x, h of x equals 3x plus 2. That, whatever this variable is, um, I like to think of it as a dummy variable. It's just holding the input spot, right? f of t, that means t is the input spots. h of x, that means x is the input spots. Uh, so if I do this, if I multiply this out, this would be uh, 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 minus 3x minus 2, combine up some like terms, 12 minus 3, uh, probably 9. 2 is 2. Hopefully I won't have to go back and fix an arithmetic mistake. So that's that one. And notice now h of f of x, um, f of x would be x squared plus t. I'm going to plug that into h. h is 3 times input plus 2. My input is an x, so I'm going to write this as x squared minus x. Feed that 3 into there, and that's what that one would be. That is almost it. We've got a couple more to do here. So now we're going to think about um, writing things as a composition of two functions. There's multiple answers to this. There's lots of ways to do it. But um, one of the things that I see here is this f of x, it has a square root in it. As square rooting something. So what I might do is I might say, uh, I'll just use g. g is the something that was being square rooted. Uh, 5 minus x squared. And then h would be the act of square rooting. So notice that I have g inside of h. So I could write this as h of g of x if I define g and h this way. Now, you might go a different route. You might say, um, I notice that something's being squared, so I'll just say j is something squared. And I know that 
Uh, the other thing that's going on is it's uh, 5 minus something. Notice that this is in that spot. J is inside of K. So you would write this one as K of J of X. There's multiple ways to do these. Uh, I think this way is a little bit better, but we will do it. Here's another example. Uh, F of X is 4 over 3 minus square root of something. And that something is that. So I might think like the something is the 4 plus X squared. And then the, the function that it's inside of is 4 over 3 minus square root of something. Um, so that would mean that G has been plugged into H. So we could say F is the composition, G inside of H, H of G of X, which I, if I'm using my notation, H of G of X. This is kind of practice for future math classes where if, if we want to write a simpler version of this, we can split it into two functions to think about it as, as a composition of functions. It helps us break it down into smaller pieces. Um, there's several right answers on these. Just give it a go. It's a good type of thinking to do. It also helps you think about like different kinds of functions. All right, give that practice a try. Message me with any questions that you have, and uh, good luck.